Good day class, uh, welcome to our lesson in Design 1 again. So today we're going to discuss about anthropometrics. Okay, so first is, uh, what anthropo let's define what anthropometric means. So according to uh, textbook literature, anthropometric is the measurement and study of the size and proportion of the human body. So it, it is inevitably bound up with statistics as people vary considerably in most dimensions. So anthropometrics class is the study of the sizes and dimensions of the human body in relation to your building or structure. So when you design your building or structure, you have to measure and consider the, its users. For example, if you design a, a building in the Western Hemisphere, you must consider what the Europeans and the Americans uh, sizes are. And if you design something here in Asia, you must consider the average size of Asians, like us Filipinos, for example. So anthropometrics is of crucial importance to architects as it is the ultimate basis of the design of most buildings. Okay, So the as this aspect is obtained during the preparation phase of the design process since it is part of the data that is crucial to formulate a design solution catered to the end users. So, furthermore, it is used to develop standards for human clearances and maneuvering space between pieces of furniture or equipment. So, without this basis, architects will inevitably fail to consider the comfort and accessibility of the user. So, the keywords here, class, are comfort and accessibility of the user. Okay, so, the average dimensions of adults are illustrated below. So, however, in most cases, the use of average dimensions will not produce satisfactory satisfaction for the majority of users. Thus, proper user profiling is required during the design process. So, during the design process class, you have to have an idea or grasp on the sizes of the occupants who will be using the building or structure okay so this is an example of uh, average dimension of adult males but uh, remember class that most anthropometric data in your books they are based on western or european sizes okay so when you design in the context of the philippines you must consider the average sizes of Filipinos. Okay, so this figure illustrates multiple bodily possessions of an adult male and the equivalent spatial dimensions required. So there's a dimension for sitting, squatting, and move, moving your hands. So this is important, last example, when, you're, when you design your hallways or when you design uh, spaces where in the person has to sit or walk okay. so there are several positions of seating depending on the social setting ambience and environment as illustrated below so these are the dimensions for working okay so it's 875 millimeters 750 to 800 millimeters in height okay so from the tip of the chair up to the finished floor line it's 450 to 480 millimeters then it's a dimension seating and and the dining room chair so it's 750 400 to 450 so that's the average height according here okay so when you design restaurants well, when you design commercial spaces uh, which uh, caters food, these are things that you might consider. Okay, Anthropometric data class is important so that the spaces you have in the building are fully maximized. Okay. So this is the furniture space. So furniture are objects in a space in which humans may constantly or occasionally interact to enable 
a particular activity intended for a type of space. So there's a vast variety of furniture designed to harmonize with that type of taste, style, ambience, and regional origin. The furniture design may also vary depending on the targeted socioeconomic bracket, generation, and mindset. So determining the preferences and behaviors of your client is crucial to determine the spatial components of the objects that they will use in a particular space. It is particularly important to note last that you have to be able to have a grasp of the preferences and behaviors of your future clients. Okay, so that can determine the spatial components of the objects which should be used in a particular space. Okay, particularly class, when you design something that is uh, modern, it would look awkward if you place furnitures that are uh, very outdated or classical in design. Okay? Okay, this is a sample of furniture space, living space. So the client preference, the style is modern contemporary. So the setting is spacious. It accommodates visitors in a general entertainment space. So the income bracket is the upper middle class. Through this information, the architect can determine the type of furniture to use thus consequently determine the spatial requirements of these objects. So imagine class, if you're going to place classical furniture here, it would look awkward in this type of space. So that is why when you design, you should also have an idea on the types of furniture which you're going to place inside the project. Okay? So together with your interior designer, you will collaborate with your client to achieve the best design solution. So furniture space. So the figure on the right illustrate the different space requirements of each type of living space furniture. However, for the users to easily interact with a piece of furniture or comfortably move around it, proper circulation clearances must be considered. So the next topic is highly critical, especially when designing for people with mobility impairment. So when you say mobility impairment, so these are so, uh, people with uh, disabilities. When you reach your higher uh, design and higher levels in architecture class, you're going to study about BP344, which will cover in detail on how to design buildings with consideration for PWDs or persons with disabilities. So this is the circulation clearance for uh, persons with crutches and someone uses sticks, then someone using this for support in walking. Okay, so people in crutches uh, gives generally accepted dimensions for a person using crutches. However, such people vary greatly. Most people use them for a short time following an accident and will be inexpert in their use. Uses, users fall into two broad groups. Those who have some use of both legs and feet and those who have only use of only uh, have use of only one leg. Okay. So circulation clearance, so the spatial dimension of a circulation space depends on the social setting, activities, and capacity of the space, the building type, and the existing laws and regulations. Here in the Philippines last, we have what we call TD 1096 or the National Building Code of the Philippines, which states the minimum dimension of aisles and hallways so that two people can pass through. Usually, it's around 1.2 meters. circulation clearance. Okay. Aside from the factors mentioned earlier, proxemics is another crucial consideration in determining circulation clearances. So humans instinctively position themselves relatively at a certain distance to other people based on the current or intended social setting. So it has four components with equivalent distances depending on how people want to interact with each other. So proxemics has a big implication on how much architects 
appropriate space based on intended or program social setting. So public spaces such as parks and lobbies, for example, due to the vast excuse me, class. <coughs> With the vast variety of people visiting or passing through it, people often tend to group themselves based on out-group and in-group mentality. So, members with an in-group position themselves relatively nearer to each other while placing themselves farther from the multiple out-group crowds. So, thus to provide a conducive environment for an intended social setting, architects needed to consider proxemics. So this is an example of a circulation tiran. So it's three meters in diameter conversation area. So, however, members within a household tend to make exceptions to their personal space due to their familiar relationships. Social distancing tends to be blurred and often can be a factor of transmitting diseases to each other during a pandemic. However, in normal circumstances, a personal space can be relatively uh, and be relatives, uh, especially on public spaces of a house such as a living room. So the illustration on the right indicates the suggested space for the conversation area of a living room. So this is a sample of a living room. So here you have your sofa. So you have here your chair. So this is a, a small uh, circular table. This is a desk. This is to the dining room. And this is to sleeping area and main entrance. Okay. So, but this is this last this plan is based on the U.S. So, in the Philippine setting, in the Asian setting, it could be different. So, you have to understand how your, what are the needs and the wants of your clients when you design a house or a building. Circulation clearance. So, minimum clearance requirement. So, it's 1.5 meters facing setting. 0.60 circulation between furniture, 0.76 meter for the use of desk, 0.19 meter for main traffic, and 1.5 meter between seating and TV set. Okay, so this is just an example class. You can get the sizes and data of the furniture on your books, especially on time saver standards for interior design. Okay, or you can also take measurements of the existing furniture in your house and study it in relation to the people who are using it. Okay, so architecture class uh, is about designing buildings or structure with consideration of common sense. So you really have to have a very good grasp or of what you call this. You should have what you call spatial awareness or spatial intelligence. Okay. You have to have a clear grasp and understanding of your surroundings if you are to be a successful designer in this field. So the figure on the right illustrates a social setting within a dining room. It portrays the importance of clearances to allow certain activities to happen. So in this case, so there's people eating here, but also there's someone passing by and someone preparing the kitchen okay so the figure on the right illustrates the equivalent spatial requirements of each of the plants components which includes the human factor furniture and circulation space so when you design glass there are three dimensions you must consider first the human factor okay, which is the needs and wants of your clients and the users and users of the uh, building. Then you have what you call the furniture and then the circulation space. Okay, I think this is illust illustrated in this one. Then one more thing, last, uh, kindly familiarize yourselves with the different measurement systems used here in the Philippines. Here, we use the metric system. In the U.S., they use the English system or they use they measure distance using feet yards and inches okay 
Here we, we measure in centimeters, millimeters, and meters. Okay, so familiarize yourselves that you can easily represent them in your floor plan. Okay, so the references are the... I think I sent this kind of checklist. I've sent these books in your email for your reference. So you have the Visual Dictionary of Francis D. K. Ching, which is important not only throughout your first to five years in architecture, but it's very important in the board exam. Okay, so cherish this book. Then you also have Newfert, the metric handbook, planning design data, then time saver standards for building types. Okay, so that's it for our lesson for this week class. Kindly uh, wait for announcements in our Facebook group for our next activities. Okay, so we'll still be using Facebook as our platform as it is readily accept uh, accessible to most of you. Okay, so see you next week and stay safe. So goodbye.